Okay, so we're back. It's going to be more of the inverse of square root, only this time we're going to be going over some examples to kind of show you guys what the problems are going to look like in which you have to find the inverse of square roots. Alright, so here we go. Alright, for our first one up here, we have the square root of x is equal to 5. If you remember, one of the ways that we can simplify or get rid of the square root is to just simply square it. So we squared it here, we squared it here, we multiplied it by itself over here, which is the same as squaring it. So what I'm going to do to get rid of the square root is I'm going to square both sides. Okay? When this happens, this squared and the square root goes away, and you end up with x right here is equal to 5 squared, which simply is 25. Okay, so number one is kind of an easier one. Number two, this time we're doing some multiple times the square root minus some number is equal to some other number. So what we're going to do is simplify this to make it so it's just the root x or just the square root of x by itself. So that means I want to get rid of everything else first. It's easier to get rid of everything else first rather than squaring both sides right away. So first thing I'm going to do, the easiest one to get rid of, would be this minus 1. So what I'm going to do is add 1 to both sides, and you end up with the 1's canceling, and you end up with 2 times the square root of x is equal to 4. Alright, to get rid of this 2, since it's multiply, the opposite of multiply is divide. So I'm going to divide by 2, by both sides. The 2's cancel, you end up with square root of x is equal to 4 over 2 is 2. Okay, now we can square both sides, just like number one up here. Squared and square root cancels, you get x is equal to 4. And a good thing to do is once you get the answer, plug it back into the equation. So if we put 4 up in this equation, we'll have the square root of 4 is 2, times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So that works out. Same with this first one. If you put the square, this 25 back up into the square root, the square root of 25 is 5, you end up with what you started with. Okay, now we're on number 3. If you have the square root, now this time there's an expression inside of the square root, this x plus 2. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get rid of the square root itself. So I'm going to square both sides. And this, gets, this cancels the square root. So now we can actually do something with that 2. Because it was under the square root symbol before, now it's outside of it. We can work with it. Now we have 4 squared, which is 16. Minus 2 from both sides. 2 is cancel. You end up with x is equal to 14. Okay, let's check this. This value and see if it works. So if you do 14 plus 2 is 16. The square root of 16 is equal to 4. So 14 works as an answer. Okay, last but not least, we have one where now it's an expression that's under the square root. This x plus 2 plus some other number that's outside of the square root is equal to x plus 3. So now x shows up on both sides of the equation. So this one takes a little bit more work. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of this 7 because I still want this square root by itself. So I'm going to do minus 7 from both sides. 7's cancel, you end up with the square root of x plus 2 is equal to x minus 4, because plus 3 minus 4 is x minus 4. We have to get rid of the square root, so we're going to square both sides. It's really important that you put everything in parentheses that you do to both sides. So we're going to square it, I put this in parentheses, and then you end up with x plus 2 is equal to x minus 4, squared, and then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, so 2's cancel. I'm also going to subtract x's from both sides, I'm going to do a minus x as well, and then you end up with 0 is equal to x minus 4 times x minus 4 minus 2 minus x. Okay, so now our x's are on one side, and we have some value of 0 on the next. This should look similar to the last unit where we use zero product property to solve for x, and that's what we're going to end up doing here. So if I distribute all this out, you should end up with 0 is equal to x squared minus 8x minus, or I'm sorry, plus 16, minus the 2, and minus the x from the end right here. So now I'm going to simplify this, and you should end up with, I'm going to write the answer over here you should end up with 0 is equal to x squared minus 8 minus x would be minus ne or negative 9x. And then the 16 minus 2 will be plus 14. Okay, from here, if you remember your rules, you have to figure out two numbers or two factors that multiply to get 14 that add to get negative 9. 
Okay, I'll just tell you for the sake of the video that they're going to be negative 7 and negative 2. Negative 7 and negative 2 will get 14. Negative 7 plus negative 2 is going to be negative 9. You'll end up with x minus 7 and x minus 2. Now, if you use the zero product property, you know that this has to be zero and this has to be zero. So to make both of these zero, you'd have to set them both equal to zero. So x minus 7 equals zero, so x would be 7 here. Over here, x minus 2 is equal to 0. That would be x is equal to 2. So we have x equals 7 and x equals 2. What we need to do now is plug these back into this, these, uh, the equation up here to see if they work. So the possible solutions that we have are x equals 7 and x equals 2. So the next thing we're going to need to do is plug these values in, into the original equation and see if they work. All right, so this 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Plus this 7 should get 10. So you have 3 plus 7 is 10. Now we're going to take this 7 and put it in for x. 7 plus 3 is 10. So at least 7 works out, so I'm going to put a little check mark by it. Let's try the 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 7 is 9. If you plug the 2 in over here, you have 2 plus 3, which is 5. So 2 will not work out. So your answer would only be that 7. Okay, that's called extraneous solutions. We're going to go over that more in class. So if you have any questions about any of these examples, uh, let me know.